is going to be I'm going to debug a website that one of the students turned in last year and this is his PHP version and we're going to get to see how he passes parameters through the URL and I know I mentioned this a few weeks ago and maybe you guys don't remember but I mentioned that there's a way to pass parameters through the URL, the, the URL and there's a way to pass parameters through the post of the forms right you guys remember and to be able to capture those parameters through the URL, you do them through the GET. While the parameters are get, being passed through the form, you through it through the, you, you get them through the post, right? And you guys already created the registration page, which was a form that posted all these values through the post. Now we're going to get to see how to do the same thing, but through the GET. So this guy created a hockey league or national hockey league tournament website. And he has 10 teams, as you guys can see. Now, his static website, when he created a static website, he had to create 10 different HTML pages. One for New York Islanders, one for New York Rangers, etc., 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 because it was static. By the third page, he realized, well, maybe there's so much com commonality between the pages that I could probably do this much faster. And that's what he did when he applied PHP. In fact, that's something that you guys should already be applying. And that is, take one of them, pick any one you want, okay? And all the values that you're displaying, replace them with variables. And those variables are going to be coming out of some kind of SQL connection query that you're getting using PHP and MySQL. And it's going to be able to display that page using PHP code for that team. Now the advantage of doing it this way is that you're going to be able to display any one of those teams if you just pass a parameter of what team you want to display. So in this case, that's exactly what he did. Notice what it says down there in the URL. When I hold over the New York Islanders menu, it says it's going to go to team.php. That's the PHP page that he created, right? That came out from one of those HTML pages, hard-coded HTML pages. And he's passing a parameter. That's the question mark. That's what the question mark means. I'm passing a parameter. Here comes the parameters. And then you pass name value pairs. A name equals a value. Ampersand. A name equals a value. Ampersand. And each one of those is going to be a parameter being passed. In this case, he's passing a parameter called TID, which probably stands for Team ID. Right? And in the first case, New York Islanders, TID is equal to 1. In New York Rangers, TID is equal to 2. In the Devils, TID is equal to 3, and so on and so forth. Now, let's take a look at his database. He has a database called Hockey, and he has a table called Teams. If you query it, Notice that New York Islanders has an ID of 1, and Rangers 2, and Devils 3, and so on and so forth. This key, and, and this is what I've been telling you guys, this key is going to be the primary key in your whatever table that you're creating, in this case Teams, right? That's going to be the field that is going to uniquely identify each one of the fields in your table. I'm sorry, each one of the teams in your table. Okay?
So basically, that's what we're passing here as a parameter. TID is the team ID that we want to show. So PHP, team PHP becomes a generic page, a generic page that will get past this parameter. It will grab this parameter and use it to be able to go against the database and grab only the information for that team. And that's what we are about to debug. So I just launched my debugger. Here's the home page. And I'm going to show you how to debug from an external uh, from an external browser. Notice that when you launch the debugger the first time, it uses the internal web browser, right? And it goes to the index PHP because that's what I told it to go. But it also passes some parameters of its own. You notice these? These are parameters. X debug session start equal eclipse dbgp. That's one parameter. Ampersand key equals one three two whatever whatever that's another parameter those are parameters that the debugger will look for in order to be able to debug from any browser so I'm gonna go into my external Firefox I'm not gonna use the Eclipse Fire uh, browser bless you and I'm going to paste that in enter and notice that it immediately tells me right there that flashing thing. Maybe you guys don't see it over here. First of all, this is just spinning, spinning, spinning like nothing is happening. And then over here, Eclipse tells me it stopped the page. So now I'm debugging. I'm debugging the National Hockey League Tournament website from an external browser. And all I had to do was go to that URL and add those parameters. Okay? Those are automatically generated by the debugger inside in your internal web browser. Okay, so let's just resume the whole page. And here it is. Right? Just render it. And then I'm going to go into New York Rangers. That's going to take me to Team PHP with parameter TID equals 2. So I click on it. Eclipse stops it. And then, what's the first statement that we're about to execute? Extract get. Remember, all this time we've been dealing with the dollar, soar, dollar sign underscore post. Why? Because all the values that we're passing from the browser to the server, they have been coming from a form. Somehow they're an input tag from text, an input tag, radio button, an input tag, uh, I don't know, text area, whatever. There are so many input tags, right? But they're all part of a form. And the form, remember rem the form had an action, and the action will tell it where it was supposed to go with that information, or to post it. And there's also another, another attribute called the, the post, right? the type and it could be post or get well if it's coming from the form typically it's a post what does that mean it means that nobody can really see unless you have a sniffer sniffing the communication that is going through that uh, pipe nobody can see what's being posted okay but but if you do it through the get, everybody can see it because it's part of the URL. All the parameters are in the URL. 
parameter equals value ampersand parameter equals value you can see it right there in the URL so how do you get it in PHP well you use the dollar sign get in fact we're going to inspect it right now and we're going to see that the dollar sign get is an array that contains TID equals to you guys see that dollar sign get is an array that has only one element and the element is TID value 2 so what does the extract do you guys remember what the extract does it makes up variables for every element of an array and it has to be an associative array what is an associative array? An associative array is an array of hashes. Remember, the elements are made of key, arrow, value. Next element, key, arrow, value. Associative array. So in this case, dollar underscore get is an associative array. When you extract it, it's going to create a variable called dollar sign TID and it's going to initialize it with value 2. You want to see that? Right now it's initialized, we're going to extract it. So let's stop over that. Here it is. Now I created dollar sign TID with initialized with 2. Yes, question. Yes, but you don't have to. Yes, you don't have to. In fact, that's one of the things that I want you to know that I'm going to be doing in your website. I should be able to add an 11th team in the database. Call it New York Yankees or whatever, right? And when I refresh this page, I should be able to see an 11th item in the menu that says New York Giants or Yankees um, and there is a URL created to team team.php underscore TID equals 11 where I can see the information about that team Now, how can I do that? How can I create such a menu? Well, it's very simple, right? Because I know that I'm creating here, I'm creating the teams menu. I need to know how many teams there are. So I just go to the database do a select all of the all the teams maybe just select the ID and the name from teams and it's going to give me one New York Islanders two New York Rangers etc cetera, etc cetera, all the way to 11 and then what am I going to do I'm going to create an anchor right with an href equals what team.php everybody's going to be team.php in that menu right question mark TID everybody's going to be question mark TID equals and then <coughs> you stop right there the first one will have the ID equals one so you produce that anchor with the equals one and what's going to be the name under which the anchor shows up it's going to be New York Islanders that's the actual name that's what you put between the open a tag and the end of the A tag. Okay? And you construct your menu that way. Then you go on to the next one. And it's a for loop. It's a, it's a, it's a while loop. Like the ones that you already know how to do from previous samples.
So I'm, I'm about to finish executing it. So the rest of the stuff you already know, you guys already know, right? It connects to a database. It selects the database. It's creating all the stuff. See, this is what uh, what's your name? Chester is, it was talking about. He hard coded them. See that? This is hard coded. This actually. This is the sub menu. You guys remember the sub the, the the menus? The menus that should be like a menu or left hand side menu, whatever you want to call it, that PHP that generates this out of the database. It's as simple as creating a loop of this stuff. A loop of this stuff. Except that instead of one, it's going to come from ID. Call it row sub ID or whatever it's from the database, right? And instead of New York Islanders, it's going to be row sub name because it's coming from the name. And that's it. It's a for loop that generates this stuff. Okay, so we're going to continue. And then at this point, look what it does. He's going to select the name from teams. See this? This is the part that is specific for the team that he's about to show. Select name from teams where ID equals TID. So you're actually selecting just the name. And he created a query for every single piece. I mean, you don't have to create a query for every single piece that you need. Right? Uh, he created a query for the name. And then he created a query for the logo. And then he created a different query for other stuff. You can create one whole query and do the whole thing all over in once. At once. See this? And then he, he, he does a select logo from teams where ID equals whatever and then he executes it and creates the first time he took that name and put it in H3 right which is a heading and then now he's taking the logo and he's putting it under an image tag the source is that image tag so some of you guys have asked me oh but wow what do I do when I want to display pictures or whatever how do I save that in the database? The answer is you don't save it in the database. You just save the name of the image that you know you're going to have under the images folder, right? You save the name of the image in the database. And that's what you're doing there. You're creating an image tag, IMG, and the source, what is the source? Is the name of is the name of the logo. Is the logo itself? Here it is. So row, row sub zero is going to give you the logo, and then you continue with all the other. Yes, Kavindra. Yeah, so row is. Remember, row is actually, here it is. Row is actually executing MySQL fetch row. And you guys remember what MySQL fetch row does, right? Yes. Yes, correct, exactly. The name of the column. Yes, he decided to do it this way because th how many <laughs> how many fields is he getting? Only one. And when you put it into an array, you know it's zero base, so it starts from rows of zero, rows of one. But you could have might as well just call it row sub logo, and it, it would have gotten the same same thing. But what does my SQL fetch row does? My SQL fetch row basically what it does it takes the result which is all the records right all the records from that query and it creates 
an array of each one of the fields in that record. So if we had more than one field, in this case we only have one field coming up, which is logo. But if we had more than one field, then it will be coming up with more in here. Okay, so we continue debugging. Now look what he does. Now he is preparing a second query. In this second query it says select name, number, height, blah blah blah, all that stuff from players where team ID equals TID. Remember what I told you about the database that you should do in such a way that you can preserve relationships between the tables through keys and foreign keys? This is why. This is why. He created a players table. And the only way that you can tell what player is in what team is by putting the key from the team's table as a foreign key in the player's table. And it's called team ID. So in the player's table you're going to find a whole bunch of players and one of the fields is going to be the team ID that they belong to. Team 1, team 2, team 3, 4, all the way to 10. So in this case, we're interested in displaying only the players from Team 2, the Rangers, right? That's why we're building that query. We're selecting all those fields from players where Team ID equals the parameter that we just passed. And then we go on doing the same thing that we've been doing, which is connecting to the database, executing the query, and look what he does. He goes into the while loop and he fetches row by row and starts putting row 1, row 2, row 3. And you guys know what that is? Here they are. Row 1, Sean Avery. Row sub 1 is 20, whatever that is, is the jersey number. Row sub 2 is 6 feet 1 inch. That's the height. Then the weight, 220 pounds etc 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 and what is he doing he's putting it into a TD one by one and then he's fetching the next row so he's basically displaying the whole list of players for that team okay what else is he doing I'm not gonna go through all of it so you guys know how to speed up things in the debugger, right? Because now you're the experts in the debugger. I want to jump to here, the next query. So I right click on it and say run to this line. And here it am. So here it is. Select player pick from players where team ID equals TID. So he did another query just for the pictures. Do you really need to do that? Not really, but that's the way he chose to do it. Okay? It's kind of inefficient if you do a query for every single piece of information. That you but at the same time, it keeps things simple if you think about it. Right? You just go into the query and get enough data for that piece of the page that you're building. That's another way of thinking about it. So in this case, what are we getting? We're getting the player pictures. Where from? From the player's table. The same table that we just got all the names and, and, and weights and all that stuff. Right? And we're, again, we're using TID. See that? We're using TID in the, in, in, in the, in the query. So what do we do? We're getting all the pictures all over again. And we're going to build image tags with them. So the source attribute of the image is going to be whatever comes from the row. Yes? Mm, no. Just save the name. If you only save the name 
then that means that you will put in here suppose that you have all your images under the folder images then you will put in here images slash and then you put the name that's in case you organize all your picture under images if you didn't organize them under images you have them all under the root then like he did look at this he has all the files inside all the files inside the root which is kind of sloppy all, the only images that he has are footer, header, button, whatever but all the devils, kings and players and all that stuff they're in here oh you know what? player picks, here they are the player picks so I bet he, he saved in the database player pick how much you want to bet? Instead of him putting player pick slash and then just the name of the picture, I bet what he did is he saved player pick, the whole thing. And we're gonna get to see the we're gonna get to see the players table right now. Here it is. ID, name, number, date of birth, date of birth city, height, weight, shoots, team ID. See that? Now you can tell what players are in what team. The player pick. See that? He hard coded player pick. Bad idea. If somehow later on in the in the project we decide that we're gonna put the player pictures by team under images or under team images or whatever, then he's screwed because he's gonna have to modify all that stuff in the database. You wanna keep the stuff in the database as static as possible, as generic as possible. And then develop your website, you know as generic as possible. So that's what he did. But anyway, let's continue. So he does that for all the pictures of the members of that team. He closes the database and then we're done. You want to see the result? This is the result. New York Rangers. This name is coming from the database and it's a heading 3. This logo, image, coming from the database look at that it's coming from the database and it's called rangers.gif right what else this is the table with all the player names and stuff see that and then at the end he puts the pictures of the players which I didn't really I didn't really like this much because it's kind of difficult to know who is who, right? The way I would have done it is I would have created one query including picture uh, player pick, right? And then including the picture as part of the row, but in a much better organized way, obviously, not a like a dump in a spreadsheet kind of. Right? I'm sorry? Yes, the menu here, actually the menu here, and I don't know why he didn't do it, should have been JavaScript menu, which means in accordion-like, ex expands or contracts, or any other, or if I go here and I click, then there's a sub-menu that pops out, you know, however you want to do it, but it should be, uh, it should have been a JavaScript. I think it's because his JavaScript one is this one. I think. I'm not sure. Problems that you guys should have already solved back when you did the website statically. So now, I have, I have had students come to my office and say, but professor, I don't know what to do because 
my PHP website doesn't look even close to my static website. Well, the reason is because you probably you are missing some div, some p tag, some td tag somewhere in there. And if you miss it, it's not going to look exactly like the static website. So what you have to do is, you have to do the following. You go and render your PHP page, the one that doesn't look identical to the static one. You render it in your browser. And then, what you do is you right-click on it and you save the page as an HTML. So call it team.php.html, right? And you're going to save it. Let me save it under the same folder. I'm going to save it there. Okay? So you have your team.php.html. Is it PHP? No, it's HTML. It's the HTML equivalent of running team.php. Right? So here I am. team.php.html. And then you guys go to the web. Like in my case, I have um, a commercial application called, uh, I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, what it does, it compares. And I have shown you guys that program here, comparing the original httpd.conf with the one that I modified. And it shows only the differences, right? That's the idea. Now, if you go to an open source, mm, com, open source comparison, compare tool, WinMerge. This guy is good. This guy is open source. You can download it. It works on Windows. Okay. Download it and look at this. You can see you can see your two files right next to each other. Okay? So the idea is to download that tool or any similar tool. Unfortunately, I don't know why Windows doesn't come as part of the operating system doesn't come with something like this, which is very useful, you know, able be able to compare two files. So now what you do is you take that page and you select it as the left hand side of the compare and then there is a team what's the name of this team? what was it? Rangers? this was here it is Rangers you guys see it? this is Rangers this is the static one Look at this. And this is the PHP one. Does it look the same to you? Honestly, I like the static much better than the PHP. Even though I didn't agree with the way he arranged the players and the team. This is the static one. And this is the PHP. Now we're going to do the comparison and we're going to figure out why exactly this thing is different. Yeah, there's probably something as simple as a CSS that he's missing. Some kind of class or whatever that allowed this to be color in different... Uh you guys can see that, right? So let's, let's compare it. So I'm going to compare it to rangers.html and I believe the tool that I have it's called Beyond Compare. That's the tool that I'm using. Okay, so I'm going to select that as the left-hand side, 
and then I'm going to select that as the right hand side still looks awful the reason why it looks so bad it's because see this table row it's all generated in one line but anyway can you guys see right away the difference come on it jumps out of out of the paint say what the class Over there is the static one. This one is the PHP one. Let's take a look at Sean Avery. What do you see that Sean Avery is missing? I mean, right before Sean Avery. The table rows of class, row A. Do you have any class in this row? No. Now, do you understand, you guys understand why this guy didn't bother putting the class? Because it would have been harder, right? Because this side is generated in a, in a while loop, right? But wait a second, in a while loop, okay, so if, if it's the first one, it's row A. But if it's the second one, it's row B. And if it's the third one, it's row A. And he didn't figure out that he could have done a module 2. A mod 2. Everybody familiar with mod 2? Module 2 is a mathematical function that calculates the remainder of a certain number when you divide it by that number. What's uh, 4 module 5? <laughs> it's the remainder, right? So what's 7 module 5? 7 module 5? 2. You divide the 7 by 5, takes only the first 5, and then the remainder, the remainder, is, uh, the remainder is 2. So when you do module 2, that's what you're doing. If it's 1, the module 2 is 1. If it's 2, the module 2 is 0. If it's 3, the module is 1. If it's 4, the module is 0. And you keep going 1 and 0, 1 and 0. So that's all you have to ask. Is the mod 1? Then I'll put row A. If the mod 0, I'll put row B. Okay? That's all. That's, that should have solved the problem this class row dash a so you guys want to do it with me where is it right here table row see that the table row should say class equals row dash a for the ones that are mod 1 right so this section right here is going to be variable in fact it's going to be based on it's going to be based on an if statement now, are we inside PHP? Yes, we're inside PHP. So I'm going to be able to generate this thing. Like this. It's either row A or row B. Based on an if statement. He keeps a counter. I guess he's going to show only the first nine, the first 
the first nine um, players. No, we're showing players. So you guys understand so far? So now I'm going to do the if statement. And the if statement is going to be something like this. I like to do this stuff, take care of the uh, you know, simple stuff first. Make sure that I don't make any mistakes. Does that look good? Yes? No? Maybe? Looks good. Right? And then, what am I going to do here? Based on the row that I'm putting, and the row is actually counted by dollar sign C O U. What does that mean? Counter. Cow. 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 So, dollar sign cow. The mod. I have no idea how to do the mod. Let me see if there's something called a mod. It's a percentage. Oh, it's so it's not a function? Okay. So it's dollar sign. I'm sorry. Dollar sign cow counter two if that is equal 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 to one if I can type then I'm going to display class equals row A if not I'm going to display class row equals B what do you guys think is it going to work Notice that I just changed my code live. Now I'm going to see it. I don't know. That's how, That should be automatic, right? Every variable that... Remember? Every variable that... Um, okay, I'm not going to go through this. I'm going to step right into here. Where is it? Here. So I'm going to run to that line. I said run to that line. Okay. And now I'm going to do the query. Look at this. Count is uninitialized. Ooh, you're right. So now we're going to try to do a mod 2 of an in uninitialized. What do you think is going to happen? Haha! <laughs> Goes to row B. Okay, so the first one is doing it with row B. Then, cow becomes 1. Because it's the first time that we actually assign a value to it, right? Yes, you're right. With the same row. So now that it's an that it's an integer, the mod two it's going to be equal to one. That's fine. That's fine. That means that the zeros we start at zero, not at one. That's fine. That means that the first ones are gonna be row B's and the second ones are gonna be rows A's. So let's just go through the whole thing and let's take a look at it. See that, and I still see a difference between this one and the and the static. So we go ahead, save this th th this one as an HTML, and do the comparison between the two, and figure out what what am I missing? What am I missing in my PHP version that I had in my HTML version that is not showing now? Got it? 
Did everybody understand URL parameters? Yes? No questions about URL parameters. You understand how you're going to use them, right? In your website. It's very key. It's very important. Okay.